grace and peace. Grace and peace to you all. It's your boy Cam. Uh, just uh, want to talk a little bit about the Holy Trinity, the Blessed Trinity. So God, just pour out your spirit upon all who are listening, all who um, are watching. And Lord, let this just resonate with every believer that as we study the scriptures, we will see that truly our God is a triune God. One person, three persons, one substance, one substance, three persons. Amen. So starting off with God, the father, I think we have to begin our discussion with the father. So, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. All right. And then the evening and morning, etc., etc. So the father is an initiator. Um, that's another way to describe him as a creator. He's an initiator. You know, he initiated um, the human species. He initiated the cosmos, right? Um, John 3, 16, for God so loved the cosmos that he gave his only son, right? So in the Greek, so God the Father, he initiates, he creates, he establishes, um, ex nihilo, which is Latin for out of nothing. Okay, and so he just the father is always in fellowship, has always been in fellowship with the um spirit and the son. And out of love, the blessed trinity decided to create a world. Uh, an uh, inhabitable world, sustainable world for human beings, creatures made in his image, in their image and likeness. And so, even at the very beginning, it says, let us make man in our image and likeness. Let us. Right? Is he talking about the angels? No, because in Hebrews, the Hebrews breaks down the fact that, he, that uh, angels are not made in the image of God, but human beings are. What is it? So what does that mean? So we literally have uh, the imprint, the the signature, and the the visible picture of God on us, kind of like that that coin, that denarius in the New Testament, where the Pharisees and scribes tried to trap Jesus with taxes. He said, "Whose image and inscription is this?" When it is Caesar, what is Caesar's, and to God, what is God's? We are God's. We have his image and his inscription branded on our souls. Okay, so unique to any other creature. The Father, um, also, I believe the Father pursues all throughout the scripture, right? Um, we see that it was God going after the people when the people refused to repent sending prophets uh, having the prophets write down his words uh, right having David write down the Psalms for the people and even earlier than that even way back during the Garden of Eden right you see God Initiating the redemption of humanity. Um, I think they call it in the Greek the Proto Evangelion, um, the, 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 the beginning of the gospel, like the, uh, the Paleo gospel. In other words, um, what happened was Adam and Eve sinned, disobeyed, and then they tried to cover up themselves with fig leaves, try to save themselves, quote unquote, or um, cover up their own perceived shame and nakedness, but it didn't work. God clothed them with animal skins. Well, where those animal skins come from? I don't know. I, I need to read some more commentary. I need to read, you know, maybe what Luther said about this too, or some other guys. But, you know, what do you think? I think, I theorize that he killed two animals 
and use their skins for Adam and Eve versus just creating animal skins. That's just my theory. But the father just, and, and the entire plan of redemption was his. And so the father was whose wrath needed to be satisfied by Christ later on. The father is who the Israel, early Israelites in the beginning um, of Judaism and then even before I want to say Moses Moses and the tabernacle represent the beginnings of Judaism as a religion so before that like during Abraham's time um, I'm sorry Moses yeah Moses and the tabernacle I thought I said that during Abraham's time and during Noah's time and then after Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, it would have just simply, I think, would have been called Yahwism. People just worshiping Yahweh. So Yahwism. Yahwism, Judaism. Now you have Judeo-Christianity. So. At the very beginning, we, we knew that there had to be a sacrifice for sins. Leviticus, right? Without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sins. So, what happened? The son said, you know what? I'm going to die for the sins of the people. So, if you go to Daniel 10, I love what Daniel 10 says because it talks about um, the son of man. The ancient of days, this is in heaven, Daniel 10. This is in heaven. There's a figure called the ancient of days sitting on a throne. And another figure called the Son of Man is led into his presence and given authority and power and dominion. Now, when, in terms of time and space, did this occur? Don't know, right? Because God has always been the I am. And so, you know, eternity and time are two different categories or modes of existence, right? So, um, so, I am means God is ever present. So I just know that it happened at some point, or maybe it's a, it was a glimpse of the future. Just at some point, the ancient of days uh, coronated the son of man. And we know that to be Jesus because Jesus' favorite title for himself was son of man, son of man, son of man. The son of man must die and, and then be raised up on three days. The son of man must suffer the, whoa, you know, the baptism I must go through, the son of man must go through that kind of thing. And so that's Christ. And now Christ came to the earth, 33 years, born of a virgin, preached, taught, healed, died, resurrected. He said that um, there, there are passages where he says he had the power to lay down his life and take it up again. And then the apostles, like Paul, say that God raised Christ from the dead. The Father raised him from the dead. And so, again, we see the whole trinity involved um and then there are, i think there are passages that even talk about uh the spirit you know what i mean um raising christ from the dead like he's called the spirit of christ in other places in, in scripture so we see the entire trinity there and we see with the spirit of god the thing that is so significant about the spirit christ said that we would do greater works than him after we receive the spirit of God. Why? Because uh, Jesus, his influence, you know, is just unprecedented. And yet physically at the time, Jesus did not travel any more than 33 miles, you know, f from his hometown, I think, or even less than that. Now, the Holy Spirit, because the spirit of God lives within the church and the church is all throughout the world. So we can multiply what Jesus did, um, like exponentially, right? So the Spirit of God, He sanctifies, which is basically it means uh, purifies um, us. The Holy Spirit, He helps us to retain Scripture. Uh, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would remind us all of everything that Jesus said. He's our counselor, our comforter, our advocate. Um, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. John 16. Um, I think the sin of unbelief, righteousness, because Jesus lived and set an example. Uh, and then judgment, because 
you know, the God of this world, Satan, has already been judged. So it's like, so it's like if you're not a part of the kingdom of light, you're part of the kingdom of darkness. And so uh, you've been judged already. And so anyway, um, just a quick synopsis of, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit, some of the things that they do. And shout out to my boys, Vittenberg Project. You know, catch them on YouTube, Vittenberg Project, or on Twitter, Vittenberg Project. And uh, at Cam Swanson, if you want to catch me. Blessings to you all. More to come. Later.